Alright, uh, dive back in here. Take a deep breath. First thing we're going to do is we're going to solidify the relationship between variable names and memory locations. Left off in the previous video where we have a variable named x, assign it some value, zero. What's really going on? The computer is going to read, uh, going to read the symbol name, the variable name, whatever you want to say, as x. It's going to try to assign, or it's going to assign a value of zero to that name. It's going to look into its symbol table. Which I'll, I'll jump into that in just one second, but it's going to look into this little dictionary of uh, defined values, defined uh, variables. It's perhaps a better way to put it. So it's going to look into its dictionary of uh, defined uh, variables. Say, do I have a uh, do I have a variable named X? If I do, then I'm just going to dig out the memory location. I'm going to set that memory location's value to zero. If I don't, I'm going to make that val uh, variable. I'm going to first time I'm going to allocate new memory. I'm going to label that memory location X. I'm going to stuff the value zero into that. So basically, that's sort of the fundamental thing of uh, how computers are going to handle variables. There's two situations when you declare a variable. The variable either exists or doesn't exist. So, yeah, uh, let's briefly go over the, the symbol table or whatnot. So, uh, computers generally keep a list of all variables that are defined. Um, this uh, this list of variables that's defined is relative to the current process. So, uh, or to the process is relative to the process that you're referencing. If that sounds um, intensely abstract. There's a reason for that. I don't want to dive into a whole much detail here because I'll derail this entire thing, but say so there's a, a process here, cheat engine x86, 64.exe. It has thousands of variables declared in the memory. If we asked cheat engine right now, said, give me the variable x, it would look in this process, it would find uh, any variable named x, and it would return a value. If it couldn't find it, then give us some error. If we were to go in here and search for another process, change it to anything, go to notepad, because that's uh, you know, whatever. Nope, we don't want to keep the address list. So, I'm just going to say, uh, switch the process to notepad. We can see that here. So, if we went back to cheat engine now, it said, give me the variable X. It's going to search an entirely different memory space. The one associated with notepad. It's going to look for variables X. If it finds one, it's going to return the value. If it doesn't, it's going to give us an error. So, what are we trying to illustrate here? What we're trying to illustrate here is that variable names are, uh, have a uh, the technical term is scope, but uh, basically we're going to say that variable names are limited to the process space that uh, that they're declared in. So we have a process Notepad. Notepad probably declares thousands of variables. What if what if Notepad as a process declares a variable that has the same name as a variable declared in Cheat Engine? It doesn't matter. Because the computer completely it imposes a logical separation on those on those two memory blocks, where when it's running uh, the process of a uh, cheat engine and cheat engine says, "Hey, give me the value of x," it says fine, it goes in the uh, in the dictionary, if you will, or the table, the lookup, whatever you want to say, it goes in the dictionary. It's what we're gonna say. It goes in the dictionary of uh, variables declared for this process. And it finds x, returns the value. Whereas if we're in Notepad and we say, "Hey, give me the value for x," it says fine, goes into the dictionary of the declared variables for this process, finds the value of x, returns that value. I'm sure they have totally different values, but basically there is some uh, in built-in sense of uh, scope and. Uh, Again, that's just sort of the technical term, but there is a built-in sense of uh, locality. Uh, maybe that's a is that, is that a technical term, I suppose, but uh, it's a little more generic. So we can, you know, kind of get locality is, is something that's it's not really uh, restricted to, to uh, computer science. Go here, locality reference in computer science, the data access issue, but it also also exists in uh, linguistics, statistics, astronomy. And uh, physics. Try the physics physics one. See what it 
Let's see what it has to say. In physics, the principle of locality states that an object is uh, influenced directly only by its immediate surroundings. We're going to stop reading immediately at that point. I'm going to minimize that. So even in physics, the principle of locality applies, and the general rules, um, or just the, sort of the basic concept of uh, locality, it's not something that is specific to computer science. In the context of computer science, it is relative to the process or uh, in terms of uh, scope is a more technical term, which is something that we'll get into uh, way further down the line. Uh, there are different frames of reference. So so you could, uh, just as a quick example here, you could, using indentation as, as kind of a, let me see if we can, uh, if I can come up with a way to do this off the top. No, there's no way that I can do this off the top. Off the top of my head, I, I can't think of a way to express this. So basically all I'm going to say right now is that, uh, when you're looking for a variable, it's going to search the uh, variables that are declared in the process that cheat engine is attached to. Switch the uh, process that cheat engine is attached to. Those variables may or may not exist at that point because the each process defines its own set of variables. As we were talking before, you can, you can name the variable whatever you want. Some variable equals five. And then some other process can come along and name some variable equals six. Let's do this uh, cheat engine.exe. That is, we're getting way. I didn't mean to spend this much time on this. Let's just say uh, notepad.exe. Whatever. Same variable name, different process space. If we reference some variable in the context of this process in memory, we're going to get back five. If we res reference some variable in the context of this process in space, we're going to get back six. That's all we're going to say about that. Pretty clear. Fairly clear. Somewhat clear. I get it. Uh, nope. Uh, minimize that. Bring this up. All right. Let's think about this for a little bit. Relation, relationship between variable names and memory locations. We talked about how the uh, variable name is relative to the process space, something we just went over. And we talked a little bit about in the previous video how the address of a variable relative to the process or uh, relative to the process so <clears throat> walking through this just one more time x equals five what is x x is some location of memory how do we know what that location of memory is it doesn't even matter that's the important thing to, to sort of take away from this so is some location of memory here's how we're going to do this so x uh how do humans read the statement or the expression x equals 5? The way that humans read this expression is there's a variable x. If it exists, we're going to forget the value of whatever it is currently. And we're going to take 5. We're going to stuff it in that variable. And anytime we see x, we're going to return the value 5. What does the computer do? The computer sees the uh, expression x equals 5. It says up. Oh, I uh, see x. I know it's not a constant because it's violating the rules that we said earlier about, you know, uh, or it's not, it's not that it's uh, violating the rules. It's that it is constrained and it is valid within the rules that we set. You can't have integers or anything like that. So it knows immediately, hey, it's in that rule set. It's a variable. I'm going to go to refer somewhere in memory. I'm going to, you know, check my list of uh, declared variables that I keep for every program. And uh, is x in that list? If it is, then I'm going to take the value 5, stuff it in that variable, and then, you know, whenever I see x, I'm going to return 5. If I don't see x, then I'm going to allocate new memory. I'm going to give that variable x the value of that memory location. And then in that memory location, I'm going to stuff the value of 5. So what are we really doing here? We're actually going to get rid of this. I'm going to say that x, what is x really? x is equal to a memory location and that memory location has a value of 5 so you can see that there's kind of a level of uh, indirection and abstraction set up here uh, and the reason that this this level of indirection exists is uh, to ease the difficulty of dealing with some of these topics on the programmer it's not all as complicated as it has to be you may be questioning that at this point say you know it's just ridiculous can you guys do you make it difficult on possible or uh, do you make it as difficult as possible on purpose? 
no. But it's just, this is just how it has to be. And I, like I said, this uh, many, many videos ago, we uh, talked about how this is the demarcation point for computer science topics and whatnot. And we're clearly clearly seeing that, uh, that we're, we're not kidding around in that respect. This is pretty ridiculous stuff. Anyway, we have a variable name, x. What is x? Well, the variable x has a memory location. It might be this. It's not that, but let's just say that it is. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say this is the expression that we're going to type in a programming language. This is the next iterative process as far as uh, how the computer is going to evaluate this and read it. And we're going to go down one more level and say that x is a variable name. It's equal to a memory location. And in that memory location, it has a value 5. We could even go down one more step. Say uh, x equals that uh, memory location. And then what is that value of that memory location? Well, let's just say it's a byte. And so the value of that memory location is 8 bits. Who gives a crap what the actual or uh, what the actual value is here? You could just do whatever. What is uh what is 5 in binary? I, I want to say it's like uh let's see 1 2 3 4 and then uh say something like that. Is that the actual binary representation of five? I have no idea. I'm kind of, I'm kind of just guessing, but that's not the point. So we have a variable name x that, that uh, put in quotes. X is a variable name that is only used to help us, as a human, refer to a memory location. Because nobody in their right mind. wants to type hex addresses into programming code. So x equals a memory location. What the computer is going to do is it's going to abstract that whole concept away by now by allowing us to label memory locations. If anyone asks you in a computer science way, is it hey what's a variable? You could sort of uh, stump them. You know, if they're just trying to screw with you, uh, you know, thinking they know stuff, you could uh, essentially tell them, well, you know what a variable is? A variable is just a human readable name for a memory location relative to the process that you're talking about. And if they get that, then you know that they sort of know a little bit about computer science, how computers work. So uh, it's sort of reverse engineer that a little bit, or uh, actually we're going to reverse engineer that in, uh, in the next video. So we can basically what we're going to do is uh, everything we're talking about here is we're sort of drilling down a little and dialing down a little bit and, and uh, explaining how cheat engine works on a fundamental level. What we're going to do is we're going to go over how everything we've talked about in, in memory locations, uh, variable names being memory and stuff like that. We're going to show how... This is uh, relevant to uh, Cheat Engine in the context of uh, some pseudo, so some uh, fake program code that we're going to write. It's you know it's not going to be anything fancy. We're just going to do something like you know for or uh, you know some value equals some constant, and then you know we'll we'll go from there again. It's not going to be real programming, but to be damn close. So, what is a variable? A variable is just a human readable label for a memory location. And then when you refer to that human readable name, the computer is going to abstract away this uh, third step or this third step right here or this second step. Sorry about that. The computer is going to abstract away this middle step. It's probably a better way to say it. Got to be damn close. Yep. Got about, I don't know, 40 seconds. You declare a variable. The variable has a memory location. That memory location has a value. When you refer to that variable, it digs out the memory location, it digs out the value, and the advantage that variables offer us is that it allows us the ability to abstract away what the absolute, or uh, absolute is the wrong word, it allows us the ability to abstract away what the location in memory of an actual variable is. So instead of typing in this crap and dealing with offsets and uh, relative values and stuff like that, we can just say, give me x. It'll abstract away this whole uh, middle step here it'll just return five. Variables are the fundamental unit of programming.